Hello and welcome to Friends of the Force, a Star Wars podcast. I'm your host, Brad. And I'm your host, Sarah. And this week on the show, we have a very special episode celebrating the launch of Young Jedi Adventure Season 2. Uh, we got to participate in a roundtable interview with none other than Nubs himself, D. Bradley Baker. Very, very exciting opportunity. Um, big thanks to Lucasfilm. But we got to do this alongside some other fan podcasts and outlets, including Father Son Galaxy, Fangirls Going Rogue, Coffee with Kenobi, Art of Fatherhood, and Fan Dads. So, uh, again, very fun to see a lot of familiar faces in the room and um, just get to talk about all things nubs because there are, are plenty of nub centric episodes in season two that uh, are near and dear to our hearts now. So very exciting. Yes, we loved Young Jedi Adventures in season one and had the opportunity to uh, interview some other members of the cast then. So if you haven't listened to those interviews they're in the feed. You should go do that. They're really lovely. The cast is delightful. Uh, and and getting to add another one with D. Bradley Baker, the iconic D. Bradley Baker as the iconic nubs. Um, we're very, very, very grateful for the opportunity. Uh, and because also we just genuinely love this show. It is such a heartwarming lovely show and it is a beautiful introduction to star wars for families with young kids. But also if you are a 20 something who is childless and needs a reminder of the good things in the world. That is us, friends of the force. <laughs> we, we are that audience uh, as High Republic fans and as children's animation fans. Um, Young Jedi Adventures is really just so great. And this season is really no different from the first in terms of its loveliness and the value of its lessons and its High Republicness. Oh, totally. And there are a lot of new characters that get added to the mix, some new villains that show up throughout. So very, mm. very fun stuff going on this season. Uh, I think if we're talking, you know, before we jump into the roundtable interview, maybe highlighting some fun episodes and maybe some lessons that stood out to us. Uh, first one off the bat, Nubs's big mistake. I know we had a clip on Twitter that got released uh, ahead of the season two launch and that kind of introduced us to Jedi Master Barabo, who was a former Pubian back in the back in the era of the High Republic many, many years ago, maybe before the High Republic. Maybe this is an old Republic Pubian. Who knows? But uh, very cool to see, you know, the trajectory of where Nubs will end up him growing into a great Jedi as great as Barabo and, um, you know, what the Pubians look like when they're all grown up. So I had a little soft spot for this episode, but also. Um, this episode is all about failure and, and learning from failure and your mistakes. And that's a, a through line that I've always loved in Star Wars, even to The Last Jedi between Luke yes. and Yoda, you know. So anytime failure is brought up in Star Wars, I'm like, yes, yes, give me more, give me more. Um, but also a valuable lesson for kids, because as a kid, you mess up a lot. <laughs> you do a lot of dumb stuff. Uh, so it's a good lesson. Yeah. And it's a good reminder as an adult uh, to be like, hey, you know that, you know, we don't have to worry about the thing that we did 10 years ago that I'm still stewing over, nor do I have to worry too hard about, uh, you know, the thing I did yesterday that I, I regret. We can keep moving forward and do better next time and it's going to be all OK. And, and and I always appreciate that reminder as someone who can get in their head oftentimes <laughs> um, with the mistakes. One, one episode that I really loved was Uprooted. Um we meet a new friend called Lynn and like, she's afraid of adventure. Uh, and then she loves her greenhouse and her garden and she doesn't see, feel the need to like go out, but there's this plant that they want to go get. Um, and, and it's so rare. And so they go on this adventure and they find this older gardener in her, her greenhouse, Prue, who is so, uh, attached to her greenhouse and her indoor life and things that, you know, she is the reason and the indoors, the reason that everything thrives and that the outdoors is kind of the enemy. And it's kind of like, if you keep going on this path, um, you can end up in this kind of more extreme place. But by the end of this episode, both Lynn and Prue realize the value of stepping outside of your comfort zone, of going on an adventure, of learning something new. Um, and I really appreciated that. Because sometimes I think I can find myself very comfortable in saying no to things that um, would challenge my day to day a little bit. And I personally need that reminder to to 
to uh, say yes to things sometimes that are going to seem a little scary or seem a little outside my comfort zone. Um, yeah. And I also was reminded of Reith. You know, he's, he was a guy who loved the library and, and didn't necessarily want to go on the adventure and into the dark. And then he did for better and for worse, but he did he learn <laughs> something new. <laughs> hey, we went out of our comfort zone starting this podcast and look, here we are now 200 some episodes later. That's Look so at what great episodes. things can come from it. And now we're talking about nubs and young Jedi adventures and the High Republic. Speaking of which, some familiar yes. characters do make an appearance, including um, Belle and Ember, which I was very excited about. Um, we did think we were seeing Buryaga in the trailer for season two, but it turns out it was just a, a normal Wookiee, but a normal Wookiee from the planet of Kashyyyk, which we do yeah. go to this season. But all Wookiees are great Wookiees. Yeah, yeah. Let's so- be real. I'm not going to be sad about that, you know, yeah. Buryaga another time. I mean, not every Wookiee is Buryaga and Kelnaka, but every Stop. Wookiee, don't, every don't Wookiee is leaps poorly. and bounds above your, your average basic humanoid in the Star Wars because Wookiees are just cool. Wookiees are amazing. I love Wookiees. Um, and it was very cool to see Wookiees in the young Jedi adventures style, animated style. Um, and all about so cute. <laughs> so cute. Their facial animations, like they did such a good job. Um, but I love the whole, uh, this is from the missing life day feast, uh, where they have to stop pirates from ruining life day, which is just like, so classic. The Trandoshans are the pirates and we know there's a long history between Trandoshans and Wookiees. And mm. there's like a really, really good lesson in that episode that I don't want to spoil, but that was one that I was like, oh, that really hit me in the feels. Like I actually really like that, you know? And Again, just being on Kashyyyk. I know for you, you're a Kashyyyk in Stan, so like that must that's, have been a good episode for you. <laughs> yes, that's correct. I love Kashyyyk. Anytime we can hang out with Kashyyyk and the Wookiees is a good day for me. And we do get a really, really special appearance in episode 11. If you did like the Star Wars sequels, there's a special one in there. So be on the lookout. If you read the description of the episode, you might find out who it, it is, but yes, you know. <laughs> but keep that one under wraps for just now it's a don't good one. don't read it while you're gonna click on it <laughs> just go in surprise it's fine yeah, but it's a great one exactly. it's a great one um character that we know is in the high republic and also in the in the sequels and i'll leave it at that so if you've been a book and comic reader you'll know but any other thoughts sarah on on, on season two before we before we dive into our roundtable interview Ooh, nothing specific other than just a reminder that this show might be for little ones but it doesn't matter your age. This is a valuable show to watch, even if it means just putting it on in the background while you're doing some chores and, and enjoying the, the, the fun whimsy of the Star Wars universe. If you're not necessarily the target audience, but truly, this is a fun show. Uh, it's worth a watch for the higher publicness, for the delightfulness of these, literally every single one of these characters, um, for the animation style, for the great voice acting. All of it. Don't write it off. I'm so serious. <laughs> I have, I, I keep my Young Jedi posters, like, or Young Jedi Adventures little poster that I got last season on my wall. I love it so much. Okay. Thank you. I, I've moved my nubs plushie from my bookshelf now to my desk behind me. And there's also a Sith holocron right in front of him. So just to give you the visual. Little, a little ominous, a little ominous, but... I love the vibe. Maybe Nubs turns to the dark side in season three. I don't know. Oh my goodness. I don't goodness. know. I'm just kidding. I'm just totally kidding. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, yeah. Um, but let's not mince words any further. And uh, let's turn it over to our roundtable interview with Nubs himself, the great iconic D. Bradley Baker. What's in here? What's that? Oh, what you got? You're right, Nubs. I bet it's the same lightsaber that Stone Pooba was holding. Let's ask Master Yoda. Hey, D, Art Eddie, Art of Fatherhood. Uh, you and I have talked before, and yeah. I really appreciate uh, not only your talents uh, in the Star Wars universe, but also talking about fatherhood. So as a dad, I love the fact that Young Jedi Adventures has a ton of great messages yeah. in each episode for both kids and adults in the Star Wars universe. Are any of the themes or messages that you have seen through Young Jedi Adventures that you have made use with your kids? Well, um, my kids are a little older at this point. 
Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's hard to assemble them so that I can give them lessons anymore. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it, it's really it's a beautiful thing to be part of a show that um, that families can sit around and uh, enjoy like this. And that's very it's constructive. It plays out in a moral universe. Good and bad are clear. Everyone pulls together to kind of problem solve together as a family or as as friends. And it's all this kind of stuff that you want to be talking about and working through uh, with your family and with your kids. So it's 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 a real it's a real joy to, and a privilege to be a part of that awesome. in the Thank Star you. Wars realm in particular. <laughs> Hi, Gindy. It's Dan hey, there Dan. from Coffee with Kenobi. Good to see you again, bud. Great to see you. Thank you. Uh, so your this show, uh, like all of your works, uh, just shows the talent and your passion that you have. Not only for this franchise, but just for for voice performance. How do you? How do you? Can you talk a little bit about your website and how you use that to encourage and empower people, much like uh, the Jedi do in Young Jedi Adventures? Yeah, well, uh, my website, I want to be a voice actor dot com, is something that I put together to try to answer that very question that I'm asked all the time: is how do you get into voiceovers, or what do I do, or or where do I start? And um, and so. Uh, Look, as an, being an actor is being part of a voluntary family. You come together, you collaboratively put together a story, and you, you help each other out to tell a good story. That's acting, and that's, that's also being a family. So it's that ethic that, that's kind of the DNA of, of what my career is is, is, a, is, is that of collaborative and being helpful. And so um, it was kind of a natural step for me to uh, piece together all that I've learned from all the various kinds of acting that I've tried that eventually kind of narrowed into voice acting and to put it out on the web. And, and a lot of people, uh, they refer to it and they find it helpful. And it's not the only source of information or uh, at all. There's, there's no one way to go about becoming an actor, let alone a voice actor. But, um, but I've put out everything that I've got and I keep adding to it. I keep adding essays and things that strike me because I want new people, I want fresh talent in. It's being an actor and being a voice actor is not about excluding. It's not about being a rock star and, and me getting all the attention because I'm not in this for the attention. When you're in it as an actor, you're, you're in it to make something that's good, that connects, that tells a story. And so to keep that process alive and regenerating, new generations of talent should be encouraged to get on board and to gain their uh, control and connection with their own creative powers and become their own version of what, what acting or voice acting is or whatever else they're going to do. Maybe, be, maybe they become a writer. Maybe they become a line producer. Maybe they become someone who animates the lips. I don't know. But it's, 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 it's a grand collaborative work to make any of these animated things and for my money uh the more the merrier so i i want to get new people uh involved who are ready for it and who are right for it hi yeah i'm victor aragon from uh, fan dance here in chicago hey. um uh, nubs is such a great character i mean just love watching him on in the series this season i do see that you have certain episodes that just highlight what he can do um, when you were given the scripts for this season and then you saw like the certain characters that you were interacting with, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but how did you feel reading those scripts? And then once you put the voice down for, for those episodes, it's, it's really fun to, to dive into a new episode because it's, it, it's an old, it, it, it's one of the, the, the oldest and most appealing things about star Wars is when I originally saw episode four back in 77, when I think I was about 13, um, that this was a fresh new world that was fully populated with all kinds of stuff that I had never seen. Aliens and spaceships and a, and a, and a world that all fit together and that worked. And, and so it, it was this surprise of, of, of this fresh world that really captivated me when I was young. And, and I think they really still have that in Star Wars, especially in this show. There's, there's all kinds of new characters and there's all kinds of new creatures. That's very important for me. <laughs> Not just because I perform a lot of them, which I do in this series <laughs> increasingly, but, um, but because that's part of the freshness and the fun of Star Wars is it's not just the same, the same ideas and the same stories that are playing out, but you've got 
fresh aliens, fresh characters that are coming in constantly and rotating in. That's that's a lot of the fun of it. So uh, I'm very I'm very excited for the fans and families to be watching to see uh, uh, what what's crawling out of the uh, spaceship <laughs> this season. Thank you. Hey, Trisha. Hi. Hi, Dee. Trisha Barr from Fangirls Going Rogue. Uh, seen you over many years at different conventions and uh, know you like to interact with the fans. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of shows like Young Jedi Adventures making Star Wars accessible to a next generation? Yeah, I think Star Wars is a, is a wonderfully plastic and, and broad Un, uh, universe or, or galaxy, I guess, and and it's 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 wonderful to see, especially in recent years, how kind of the center core tone of what Star Wars was to me has has further expanded, and further into the more adult realm that would that would play more to a grown up audience, but also pulling out into a, a tone that that also addresses specifically families and younger kids, a preschool set. And so it's really gratifying, I think, to see how well it thrives in all of these different realms. And, and that's really a tribute to the creative engine um, that they've cultivated since Disney's taken over. And uh, the, the writers and, and the overseers and the producers and the directors that they allow in to kind of push this out in different ways. And, um, and, so, and so here we have uh, with, with, uh, with our show, with Young Jedi is is uh, for the for the kids, um, but it fits it fits perfectly within the, the the canon of what's playing out of the larger stories that are playing out, although it plays out before a lot of the drama that most are familiar with, and it's um it's kind of a safer space, but it's also still fun, and there's a lot to be learned, and it's about um, kind of figuring out the galaxy as you as you move your way through it and come into your own superpowers and figuring out yourself. And so um, uh, all of that fits beautifully with what Star Wars has grown to be, which is which is bigger and better, I think, than it's ever been. Hello, Dee. This is Kerwin and Keith of Father Sun Galaxy. Hey, you two. The series features life lessons for people of all ages to learn. Yes, which life does. lesson resonated with you the most? The life lessons that resonate the most for me are about finding your own confidence. Is that you you may have things that you do that are incredible but that's not necessarily all there is to finding your way in the galaxy in that you're going to have stumbles and you're going to have things that you still have to learn and that you have your friends and family available to kind of work your way through as you as you as you come online with with these superpowers that you realize that you have so i think that's it is kind of is is learning to find your confidence uh, in the face of challenge of, and adversity in a situation where you can rely upon the people that you're with to help you through that. Hi there, I'm Sarah from Friends of the Force podcast. It's hey. nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Um, thanks so much for being here today and chatting with all of us. Uh, in voice acting, you are using every corner of your vocal range and, and uh, voicing nubs, I imagine, is a bit different uh, than voicing members of the Bad Batch like Crosshair. <laughs> is there anything yeah. essential to your warm-up routine um, as you ensure that you're, you're getting all of these voices, whether it be nubs or members of the Bad Batch? The most important thing for me about coming into a session is being ready. Um, because a lot of it of what you end up coming up with is improvisational and in the moment. And what is what they clarify to me in terms of what's happening in a scene or how it's blocked out or the tone of what the other actor has been saying, which I can't hear when I'm reading a script, right? Um, because we're all recorded separately now. So so I I come into it sort of with a blank slate of readiness. Uh, my my pre preparation is more about getting a good night's sleep, having having a decent breakfast, and being maybe a little meditation to to be to be clear and energized and ready to to quickly and efficiently come up with something that works beautifully. So that's my job is 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 actually to essentially approach the stage with a clear and energized mind and full access to 
my imagination as well as to my vocal orchestra that I bring along with me and then have that ready to quickly come up with what the producers and the writers need in the story that we're telling. That's how I look at it. I'm not doing, ah, la, 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 la. I used to do more of that, but, uh, but a lot of that now is, is not, not amount, uh, it's not about prep preparing. It's about not doing things that damage my voice so that I, I'm accessible my my humanity, if you will, is accessible. My voice feels is is clear and not ground down or wiped out by what I just did yesterday or what I did in my session before. So I'm constantly protecting my voice even as I'm using it. So I want to deliver the I want to deliver the vocal goods, but I want to do it in a way that doesn't work against my voice and 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 ruin my 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 instrument so that I can't deliver what is needed. So that's kind of how I look at it. Yeah, so it, like Victor from Fandad said, you team up with a, some cool characters, and we see a lot of cool characters as well. If Nubs had a time machine and time and space wasn't an issue, what other Star Wars character in the Star Wars universe, galaxy, whatever the case may be, would be a good fit or a good team up with Nubs? Um, I would get no Nubs to Hoth, to the planet Hoth, so that he could meet the Tauntauns and ride around on Tauntauns. <laughs> yes. <That's, laughs> I, I think that would be an interesting, uh, that, would, that would be fun. And then, yes. and I'd love to do some some tauntaun sounds, although they may not need me to because they've kind of got the tauntaun sounds, <laughs> that kind of stuff. But I think uh, I think that would be interesting to see, like an entire episode that has no dialogue, but that just has nubs trying to figure out tauntauns and how to ride them and how to interact with a tauntaun. <laughs> I think that would be delightful. <laughs> Uh, just like your voice acting in Star Wars and all that good stuff, this answer didn't disappoint as well. Thank oh, you good. <laughs> Excellent. So how much would you say, uh, I mean, Nubs is obviously adorable. People are going to get to get their picture with him at D23 this weekend. But how much would you say the look of Nubs uh, affects how you perform him, especially when you first saw him? Well, it's uh, you know, he's a, he's a fuzzy little bright-eyed bundle of optimism and energy. Um, that that you definitely get, but uh, as important is is what's happening in the script and what's playing out. So, really, as an actor, I have to draw upon the the entirety of all of that. Um, now, with good storytelling and good animation, which is what you have here, um, you you can you can kind of turn off the sound and you can still tell the story. It's still very clear, so it, it it's very much a visual story that's playing out, but uh, but hopefully that the uh, the words and in my case the utterances uh, add um, a, a, a deeper human dimension uh, uh, and specificity to what's playing out, so that you have you know you have a full uh, relatable story that plays out uh, rather quickly <laughs> in this show. That's uh, I I just think it's just it's such a gem. It's such a gem. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this roundtable interview with uh, D. Bradley Baker. And a huge thank you again to Lucasfilm for allowing us to participate. Go check out the season. It's a good one. A lot of great episodes, as we've said up front. Uh, and if you want to hear more from us on things about Star Wars, things about the High Republic in particular, we got a lot coming up in terms of book discussions. So you're not going to want to miss those if you're a book reader. Uh, and you can follow us on all of our socials, including uh, Twitter and Instagram, where we mostly post all of our updates and episodes. Uh, and please leave a review and, and follow the podcast wherever you listen so that other folks find the show, join in on the discussion and uh, make sure you never miss an episode uh, for the rest of this year, because there's a lot of good stuff on the horizon. Yes, absolutely. And when you watch Young Jedi Adventure Season 2, please let us know your favorite episode. Do you agree that the nub-centric episodes were your favorite? Do you like another episode? Reach out to us. We want to know. We want to know. Uh, and a big thank you as well to our patrons who help keep the lights on at Friends of the Force. They are Brian, Ben, Cheryl, Clay, David, Emma, Jennifer, Katie, Knights of Wren, Krista, Leanne, Logan, Lucy, Lindsay, Matthew, Nathan, Nicole, Rob, Ruth, Santa, Sky Talkers, Tom, and Travis. We're so grateful for your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for everyone who takes the time out of their day to listen to us yap. We appreciate you very much. So please stay healthy and happy, and we'll see you in the next one. Until next time, everybody, may the Force be with you always. Bye!